So in the online realm of InfoSec and reverse engineering, most people are probably familiar with native code and the tools that you use to interact with it. So Ida, Ghidra, etc., which is all fine and dandy. And Java is not really that big of a player, so there's not really a lot of topical knowledge among InfoSec people about how to work with Java code in terms of reverse engineering it. So they use the tools that are familiar with them. Uh, so they use Ghidra and Ida. I don't have Ida, so I'm going to use Ghidra, because I've actually seen Ghidra recently being used in a Java reverse engineering tutorial series, and I was honestly disgusted, because this is a terrible idea. I'm going to demonstrate why. Here I have some jar files. Now I'm going to use... Did I want to open that? So yeah, the, the program I'm analyzing here is my tool, Recaf. And for context, this jar file is 18 megabytes and it has 11,000 files in it. And if I use modern Recaf to open it, it opens in two seconds, quick. And it's immediately searchable, Recaf, Recaf, so there's that, util, there's all the util stuff. And I can search and do all the jazz. So point being, it loads instantly and is ready to go. Let's do that in Ghidra. Now, single file, that's not going to work because that expects it to be like a DLL or XE. This is a container because jars are just zips. So let's open it as a file system because we don't want to import the whole thing with batch. Here's why. So this program has 9,500 something classes in it. I'm only going to import the recap directory. Actually, no, I'm going to import the me directory. So that's 700 classes. And this is a small portion, because 700 out of 9,800 or 9,500 something, some number like that, that is less than 10%. So you're thinking, OK, so most tools open this relatively quickly, right? Yeah. So like for comparison, let's open, um, where's JD GUI? I'm blind. <laughs> so let, let's open it in JD GUI. Instant. Let's open it in Leuton. I don't know how you pronounce these. Is, names are hard. But yeah, instant. But for reference, uh, JD GUI is probably what everyone's familiar with. It's a classic old school tool that everyone loves. Uh, batch import's still going. I'm going to leave that. Uh, what's great about this as a baby's first tool is it has a lot of handy features in it. So of course, if you open a class, all the references that are to classes inside the jar that you dropped in, you can just click and go to it. It is super convenient, so you can easily navigate programs this way. And of course, the decompilation output, the quality is pretty good. JD GUI, for vanilla Java code that's not obfuscated, does a phenomenal job. Most of the time, it decompiles code perfectly. That's great. But if you have obfuscated code, then it gets kind of messy. So the batch import is done. And for context, it usually takes about a minute and 30 seconds to import this folder. That is unacceptable. The Java class file format is super simple. It shouldn't take that long. But even on top of that, that's just to import this. I don't know what it's doing, but it's not even analyzing the code. Because if we open this, it still prompts us to analyze it. So like, wh what is it doing that takes so long to extract the files? I, I don't understand. It's just, that's just, you shouldn't do that. Bad. That's terrible performance. So it being slow, that's one thing. Next thing. So we are in recap class, right? You see how there are these fields at the top of this uh, class file? There's, we have a bunch of static fields here. Yeah, uh, where are they here? Because the first thing we have are the methods. And that's that's just where it starts. And it's not at the bottom. Constant pool's down there, and there's a bunch of random BS down here, but no fields. Honestly, yeah, what the, you know, what the hell? Yeah, that's crazy. That is... The scroll bar is actually useless. That is nuts. Okay, 
I didn't even think that was a problem, but yeah, there's a problem. Um, point being, my original point, where are the fields? Are they in the program tree? No. The program tree only shows you methods and whatever these two first items are. And they're not in the symbol tree either. The functions, those are just the method names. The labels are just the constant pool, which it does this weird like grouping thing for. And there's nothing in either of these. It's also not in the data type manager, which does show you the types that are referenced, but it can't show you the fields either. And when you double click on something like this, it just shows you the data type format. It doesn't show you the value. So that's basically useless in, in this case. We, we have no idea how to find what references are. So like here, the constructor. This is going to be invoke special Java Ling object uh, in it. And then, you know, no parameters. But you can't get that information here. It's just not available. And if I hover over it, can I, can I move this? No, hello. Yeah, so you just can't get this information anyways. It's, for context, I'm gonna open it here. Recaf, recaf. The constructor's not shown because it doesn't need to be, but if you open the assembler, you can see very basic instruction call to the object initialization. But it's just, it's just fucked up here. And all the reference types are like this. You can't find a single field or method reference in this window. You just can't. You have to click on it and pray that the decompilation output is going to line up. So like I'm clicking on invoke special, but it's highlighting this. But even so, like STD call, that's not a Java thing. It knows that there's no parameters here, but it adds the this parameter because it's a local variable. The name's fucked up. Like the init is the name, but it adds void at the end. And here's why it does that. If we look at main, what it's doing is it has the method name, then the parameter types, then the return type. It knows the name of the method, but doesn't use it. And then it knows the variable name, but doesn't use it. Like I have debug information in this jar file and it just doesn't use it. And this output is just wrong. So like here we have a random accept call. Okay, it's a invoke dynamic instruction because that's what's highlighted, right? Yeah. Problem is, uh, if we look in recaf and we edit this method, accept is the name of the invoke dynamic call uh, because that's the name in the consumer type. And there's the meta factory. Meta factory is shown here. But accept isn't, consumer isn't. We have consumer here, but it's not shown here. So that's pretty annoying. And even if it is shown here, you can see in the decompiled, decompiled code here, except as this lambda here, it takes T and it is this log call. Nothing, there is nothing here. Just, it's just bad, and it gets worse. If you have multiple method parameters, the name just gets ungodly long. It's it's just bad. And I'd like to point this out. So here we have a object array variable. This is output correctly. This is a legal definition of a variable. You can do object bracket like this, but later. It, it breaks, and I'm going to show you how. So let's look at some obfuscated code. I'm going to batch import it. There's not many things in here. And another thing that's odd, I batch import this, and it doesn't use the root of the, the project name poo and put the, the classes in the root. It puts it in the recap folder for some reason, which is just, that makes navigation confusing. But anyways, let's open this. Here. 
So in this case, we have a primitive uh, array type. So this is a int array, and it fucks it up. This you, you can't use the bracket position like this to have a naming convention. I'm pretty sure they're just doing like some basic substringing logic in order to like get the the pretty printed type from the full type, and just it doesn't work for array types. And of course, the variable name has the bracket in it too, which is just illegal and wrong. You can't do that. But the stack analysis of Ghidra, Ghidra, however you say it, is also bad because look, undefined for it doesn't. E Unlike native code, which you can do all sorts of fuckery in, Java code, you have to pass verification for this code to run without requiring the no verify flag. And this doesn't. So, like, you should 100% be able to walk the code, figure out the stack, and get the values of anything that isn't directly in the local variable table. This is just unexcusable. And of course, check cast. Like, it could handle casting right. It, it tries to cast things here and here, it, it, it fucks up in both cases, but in here, it does it as like a method call? That's, that's not right. So that's wrong. And I'll commend it. The control flow here for binary search, this is good. This is very clearly binary search. So what's the recursion look like? Oh, it makes up a random method name here. This, this method concat44 doesn't exist. That's not a real method. That's not in the program anywhere. So that's just wrong. But it gets even better. So let's open the obfuscated code and recap for comparison. So yeah, binary search, obfuscated code. We have multiple decompilers, so if one fails, we can use the other, but for our intents and purposes, this one works, because we want to look at this decode function at the very bottom, string a, three ints. If we look at main, can't be decompiled, you can see when we have a syscall to print ln, it's calling this decrypt function, and it takes values off the stack, and that turns it into a string. So the way that it works is that the three values that are passed are merged into one. Uh, this is our string index that we look up in an array, which is one of the fields that this obfuscator adds. And if the value in the array exists, we're going to return it. Otherwise, we're going to compute the value and put it in the array, and then we're going to return that. And this computation has this giant ass switch case, which populates some cipher value. And then there's some like XOR and bit shifting logic here, and you get your string. So it's not that terribly complicated of a string decoding uh, function. But in Ghidra, warning, bad instruction. So where is it failing? Scroll down, Psi push OXFF, I and, and then garbage. So let's let's compare. In recaf, if we look at this method in the assembler, oh, that one's messed up. Obfuscated code typically does that, but that's why it's a snapshot. There's bugs. Anyways, psi push two fifty five i and table switch zero two fifty five. So you recognize this pattern? Yeah. It's failing on the table switch instruction. Now, table switch, that instruction has been in the JVM class file format since basically day one. So there is no excuse to not be able to parse it. It's just, I just don't understand how you fail parsing table switch. It, it's just honestly pathetic. But they do. And JDGUI, which I previously said, dies with obfuscated code. Let's, let's check. Binary search. And it decompiles the binary search, and it does an okay job of it. Now, it does screw up part of the switch, as in it doesn't show you the stuff that's happening inside, but it shows you a switch. 
which is better than Gehydra. And of course, there's the rest of the stuff that happens after the switch, which you can't see because it fails. So, even tools like JD GUI, which aren't designed to handle obfuscated code, are better than Gehydra and understanding the logic of the, of the thing. So just... I'm, I'm tired in multiple ways. I'm tired because it's one in the morning, and I'm also tired because I keep seeing people use Gehydra and native tools to look at Java code. Like, I found a tutorial series that doesn't use JD GUI or anything like that. Bytecode Viewer, JByte Edit, Recaf doesn't use any of them. It uses Gehydra to look at Java code. And it's just so tiring because this is this is almost as bad as recommending JD GUI to look at obfuscated code. This is just a objectively bad tool to use with Java code. Good for native, bad for Java. And Java reverse engineering being my thing at all, it just pains me to a obnoxious degree when I see this being used and advocated for. So that's basically the end of my TED talk about ranting why native tools shouldn't be used for Java code. It should be obvious, but clearly it isn't because people still use it. See ya.